What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another video, another stream on the channel. Of course, as you can see, we are joined by Rovers number one, James Belshaw. Uh, of course, I hope you guys do enjoy this. Do hit the like button. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Currently on the road to 6,000 subscribers, which is mad. Uh, and yeah, if we can smash the likes, over 200 likes would be quality. But yeah, James, first of all, appreciate you coming on. And yeah, how are you? How are you doing since the season's ended? Yeah, no problem. No, thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, it's been a, a whirlwind sort of, well, two or three weeks now. Um, we obviously went away just after the uh, after the promotion, so we had that and then had sort of last week to kind of chill out a bit, um, step up the preparations for the wedding. That's in two weeks, so I've got that coming up. Yeah. So got a lot of, got a lot on with that. But no, it's been, um, in a way, it's been nice to not have to worry about football. I can watch the playoffs and watch yeah. what well without sort of having to think about it um so yeah no it's great um like i said the best way to end the season and and yeah it's been good yeah definitely yeah i i, I completely agree you know i was i was even like, a few months back i was saying we're gonna get all my eggs um and yeah it's just nice not to have to worry about the playoffs like you said you can obviously you and all the players went off um, you know, deservedly after quality quality into the to the season, well, even since January, really. Um, and yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously, obviously, touching on that, how how was how was the whole holiday in Dubai? You know, celebrating. Obviously, everyone's seen all the videos. It looked amazing. You and the lads, you know, singing. You know, rope gas are going up. You know, pump it up and all that stuff. Yeah, how how was it yeah. in Dubai? It, it was great. I'd never I'd never been to um, never been to Dubai before, but we. Um... We had a meeting before the awards. We went to the training ground before the awards and on the Sunday, and it was um, just sort of floated. The idea was there was a pot uh, that Whale had kindly sort of set aside if we did get promoted. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we flew Tuesday, so it was quick turnaround um, there for a few days. And, yeah, what a place. Can't go into yeah. too the stories like, but... No, it was, no, it was it was amazing. Like to be, everyone came out as well. A lot of the staff were there as well. So it was um, to be all together after what we've been through as players. It's been a bit of a up and down sort of a testing season at times. So yeah, to cap it off with that, yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet it was mad, and yeah, you know, like you said, obviously some of the stories you can't tell, but yeah, it must have just been been amazing. And fair play to while he's done bits of Rovers and. Yeah, to do that as well. Yeah, I, I think it's obviously well deserved for you and all the players, to be honest. Just saying, uh, getting everyone's comments up. Of course, I will be going through all the questions that everyone sent in. There's loads of questions. If if you have any questions and you get them in the chat, I'll try and save them for, for the end as well. So, yeah, thank you to everyone tuning in. There's so many people. So I won't get through all the comments, but I just want to say thanks for everyone tuning in. So, yeah, getting, getting started off, I mean, Obviously, it has to only be one thing, really. Um, just talking about how it felt, you know, what was the emotions like after getting promoted? Of course, it was crazy because obviously it was 2 0 half time. And then some people were like, oh, are we going to do it? And then we got obviously the five goals. And then obviously it ended a bit because obviously everyone was on the pitch going mad for the seventh goal. But yeah, what was, what was your emotions and how did it feel like? You know, there must be so many words to describe it. Yeah, I think um, I think it starts the week before um, the Rochdale game, and since we've yeah. been promoted, I don't think anyone's mentioned that. And that for me is the greatest comeback this season. That beats the Oxford one earlier in yeah, the yeah. year um, to score, obviously the two late goals. And but that's not even been mentioned in anyone's interview. No one talks about that. Whereas that's for us to come back the way we did. I mean, there was a lot of expectations yeah. on our shoulders in that game, and kind of didn't go to plan with 2 nil down we, we were getting popped off the park by Rochdale and you sort of think mm. what's cracking off here and then second half we again turned it on a little bit but no nowhere near the levels we were playing at the few weeks before and then get the two goals towards the end and that sort of feeling then we, we all sort of said after that game is like oh can you imagine if that was like to get promoted and everyone yeah. was, but then the week in training leading up to the um Leading up to the Scunthorpe game was just nice and relaxed. Like the atmosphere on the training ground has been great. Um, the gaff has been very consistent with his sessions, with his messages the last few months. And and yeah, we it was one of them. There was a weird feeling about the place that we were going to do it, but I didn't think we'd do it in the manner. I I had a feeling that Barrow would get something against Northampton, so I yeah. thought we I thought we'd do it that way. I was 
dead confident that we'd do it, especially after the Rochdale game. But then obviously you turn up at the Mem for the game and you, you you realize like the weight of expectation like you can sense the crowd you sense there's more people there there's a lot riding on it and for me it's kind of can you blank that out and just just go and play and to be honest i, I don't think i touched the ball for 90 minutes i just watched <laughs> the same as you lot did <laughs> watch the lads go and do the thing but you could tell with the crowd's reactions what the score was at barrow northampton because the roar when we first started was amazing and then you kind of had like, you could sense it as players it going flat a bit so i yeah. looked over the bench and i just was like was like signaled like one nil to just sort of and the physio was like no it's two nil and i was like oh okay, fair <laughs> yeah then uh ansi actually went to me oh it's three nil and i was like oh jesus christ like then you we're we're obviously two nil up you heard the fan Don't know if he's still here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm still here. Yeah, went a bit, went a bit weird then. Anyone see me? Yeah, Can't yeah, I can Charlie. see you. Can't see me. Is that better? Yeah, was that? You? I couldn't see you then. You just all the screen all went off. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, apologise to everyone watching my connection. Yeah, it's terrible. Fine, yeah, yeah, carry on. It's, it's fine. Yeah. But yeah, we um, at half time. I don't know how much you heard that, but at half time, the gaffer sort of came in and said, look, like, they're 3-1 up. Let's just go for it, see what we can do. Um, planned attack and substitutions. And then we've come out and started on fire. You get Azza gets the third, um, Evo gets the fourth. And then at that point, you start to think, OK, then Evo's free kick, get the fifth you start to see the crowd but I think at that point I'd kind of stop celebrating because I mean the gas heads will see me when we score I go mad but I'd kind of just put the brakes a little bit because I thought okay this is getting close now let's just not sort of run before we can walk and then score the sixth I turn around and everyone's everyone's screaming one more one more one more and then the seventh goes in and it's just pandemonium obviously you see everyone on the pitch and <laughs> Like I said, there's there's a lot been said about stuff on the pitch recently, but the emotions are obviously so high. Um, yeah. And then we went off, and that was a, a weird sort of feeling to be taken off the pitch because we're on the changes. Yeah. We've had this like adrenaline shot. Um. So we're back in the changing rooms, and their changing rooms, like the doors are kind of opposite yeah, each yeah, other. Yeah, it's close. Yeah. So it's all kind of kicking off a bit. Everyone's got an opinion. Everyone's shouting stuff, and it's just like got us in. Shut the door, and then. Everyone's just on the phones, just watching the um, the Barrow score. So, yeah, we we've we've gained an advantage from it because we knew that the um, we knew that the Barrow game had finished. So we knew we didn't need another goal. So then, at that point, my focus switches. I've got my goalkeeper coach coming up to me saying, "Belly, just switch on, switch on." They could have a shot. I'm like, "Just chill out, like relax. Just let me <laughs> let me just go out and play." Um, and then the ref came into both changing rooms and came into our change room and said look lads I'm playing eight minutes like eight minutes all in I think he ended up playing about six or seven because we just kept the ball it was just yeah. but yeah for me as a keeper I was like right okay I've got eight minutes here just do what you've done just uh, if you need if you require I think they got a free kick a couple of minutes in like a long free kick but apart from that I don't think I think we just kept the ball I think I touched it a couple of times um yeah but then yeah you see the ref blow the whistle and I was just looking at the ref for the last like two minutes as everyone was just waiting 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 and then you just we, we that feeling at the end it, it's so hard to kind of if you could bottle it up you tell it for millions that feeling like yeah and yeah you, and you see everyone sprinting I, t I said to jed i was like jed if we go up you've got to make sure you get to me first so if you watch the videos you see jed just <laughs> bombing across to me um but then like, obviously you can't see anything because i don't know what's happening because i've got people all around me you can't see any of the lads so then you get put on someone's shoulders then you can see like azar and everyone and you see everyone on the shoulders and then you just have that kind of moment. I got put back down, put back up again and looked down and my old man and my brother were there and see them. They got onto, onto the pitch to see me. And yeah, just incredible. Like we were third for five minutes of the season. It's crazy, isn't it? More, more days. I saw someone sent me something on Twitter the other day. We spent 
think three or four days in the bottom two and we spent five minutes in the top three <laughs> like it's yeah. but but i think the way that we played like you said earlier like the second half of the season like if you look at the season in two halves we didn't lose a home game after the port vale game back in december mm-hmm. we again i've not seen rovers play before but some of the football we're playing some of the best that i've been involved at in in my career and and even if we'd have gone in the playoffs we'd have done it because i don't think anyone would have wanted to play us the way that we were playing especially with we just said if we're getting in the playoffs we want the second leg at the men um yeah we'd back ourselves against any of the sides and you always say oh there's a team you don't want to play i don't think anyone would have wanted wanted to play us in the playoffs but i'm just i'm just glad for me like it's been it was a long se- a, a long season mentally i think for everyone at the club um mm-hmm. With obviously what had gone on at the start of the season, the relegation, there's the hangover from that, there's the massive turnover. I obviously had the summer I had last year with football. So I'd been almost constantly thinking about football for two years. So when we got mm-hmm. promoted to Harrogate the COVID year, that whole summer during the pandemic in 2020, it was like, are we going back? Are we not? Are we going to play the playoffs? Are we not? Then we went back and played them. So I had that whole summer. Then last summer was worrying about speaking to clubs. Am I going to play here? Am I going to play there? So now it's like the first time in two years where I can, the last two weeks, I've just been able to completely switch off from that cycle that you get into as a player of prepping for games, playing games, performing. Um, but yeah, it's just, like I said afterwards, we that moment's for every single Rovers fan because <laughs> they've followed us up and down the country. And for me to be a part of that, like in, in 50 years time, you'll be speaking to, your mates or your missus or whatever and you'll be like remember that team remember that seven nil and it's part of history yeah. so no if you're very lucky but very proud to have been a part of it yeah yeah it, it was just mad like you said you know if you split the two seasons in half and um you know unbeaten like you said since uh poor Bill. <clears throat> and then you know to and yeah i completely agree with you we we were chatting on the stream I think last week that saying I, I've been going since 2007 um, and yeah I, this is definitely the best football I've seen I think a lot of people you, you know a lot of gases can can agree with that and it, yeah it's just mad it was just it was just the craziest season going and you know obviously you know you know like you said um, about Harrogate obviously you, you enjoyed you know great times there I think you got promoted twice is that right at yeah. Harrogate yeah um, and then and obviously that that was one of the questions like how how did the actual move come about because obviously you was on you i think if i remember correctly you was on trial with us in, yeah. in obviously pre-season and then obviously obviously uh you know we ended up signing you but how how did it come about i know obviously you know you know for the amount of quality things you've done there you was in that team that got the back-to-back promotions and obviously it, it was just crazy but yeah how how did you end up coming coming to Rovers? How did it come about? So the um, I was at Harrogate for four years. Obviously, got two promotions, took them into the football league, and then end of last season, uh, we were safe. And the the gaffer wanted to have a look at the number two keeper. He'd been with me for four years, and we could just sense that something wasn't quite right. And then I had a meeting with him, and he just said that he wanted a keeper with more football league experience. Um, he he already had a keeper lined up so he said that you're he said look we want to explore other options so I said well does that mean I'm free to explore other options and he said yeah because I I had two years left on my deal so I signed a three and a half year deal the January before and had two years left and to be honest the first kind of obviously it's hard but that first kind of when I remember driving away from the training ground thinking okay like it's exciting like you're going to speak to other clubs we see what's out there I thought with Audrey, I'd got promoted from the league below. I was goalkeeper of the year in the league below. So I thought, yeah. worst case scenario, I'm going to have top end of the National League. Um, but yeah, spoke to a few clubs. I spoke spoke to Notts County quite a bit. Obviously, I'm a Notts County fan, local club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But there was sort of, with goalkeepers, it's hard because you can't just take a goalkeeper unless you need one. So there has yeah, to be yeah. slots available. So that sort of goalkeeper merry-go-round didn't happen. So one move didn't happen. So then that all fell through. And then I spoke to a couple. Um, I spoke to Solihull, speaking to them quite a bit. Um, mm-hmm. But then a lot of clubs just just like, yeah, we like him, but we've got keepers. And then slots are starting to get filled. So as a keeper, you think, what's going to happen here? And 
went back for pre-season with Harrogate, had sort of three days there. They took my squad number off me. Um, and then had the, the third day I was there, I got a text from um, a lad called Scott Brown that was at Accrington with Tony Warner and a few of the, the staff. And he just said, oh, I've had, he screenshotted a text that Tony Warner sent to him and said, oh, I've had Bristol Rovers asking about you. So then my agent rang me and said, look, yeah, they want you to go down. And to be honest, I think, I don't think Rovers were that keen to have me down. They needed a number two keeper. Um, mm. And my agent is good friends with Tony Warner. Um, and he sort of said, look, no, get him in the building, have a look at him. And I think Tony was like, all right, then, like, as a favour, we'll have a look at him. And was there for two weeks, um, played in the Barnet game in pre-season. And the gaffer sort of said, look, I, if I wanted just a number two, I'd have signed you after the first day because I can see you can play in goal. But I want someone who can push. Um, if you get a chance, you need to be able to perform. And so then before that Plymouth game, um, I've since found out that I don't think the gaffer was going to was gonna take me before that game. And then I did all right in that game. And I think he's had a chat with Tony Warner. I think Tony was kind of the big sort of like uh, driving force in it and said, no. So I was on the way home after that Plymouth game, just waiting to hear. And then got a phone call and said, yeah, we want to get it done. And, and yeah, I think for me, it was just going to a club with all due respect to Harrogate, like the size of Rovers, a lot of my career has been spent in the non-leagues. And when you sign, you sort of see and you know, little things like you, all your messages on Twitter, like your Twitter following is going up, the exposure you're getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sort of see, like, get a feel for the size of the club and something I'd always wanted to play for, a, a, a traditional sort of old old school uh, big football club. And yeah, the deal got sorted within a few days and then, yeah, got that done. So... And then, like you said, the journey from there has just been, if you'd have handed me a script then and said, this is how the year's going to go, you'd have, you'd have laughed at it. It'd be laughed at Hollywood. It, it'd be laughed yeah, at yeah. because it's just so ludicrous with everything that's gone on behind the scenes, everything at the club, everything that we've done on the pitch. It's just, yeah, incredible. Yeah, it's just just crazy. I mean, it's yeah, it's just mad. I, I literally have no words, like, con considering it, like how how amazing you've been, you know, and just everything, you know, even, you know, obviously saves and just, it's just everything, the way the fans have took to you straight away. Um, and yeah, just everything, like you've just been amazing. And it's crazy to think that, like what, what happened to you and with all that. And then now you, you, you're playing in league one for the first time ever uh next season and you've you've been amazing this, this season for us and i i'm just lost of words like how how that actually happened and how and now obviously you've been amazing like i said the, the fans love you and yeah it's it's mad i mean i mean i bet you're like thinking like what what the hell like what a crazy crazy thing to happen uh yeah. you know and then I said to my missus i said from where i was this time last year to where we are now with what's happened this season and yeah, I was obviously I was fortunate to get the opportunity to start quite early on, um, and then been fortunate enough to play well, more or less every single every game this year. And and for me, I think I think what people can see is how I just enjoy playing football. I enjoy playing for the gas. I enjoy being out there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's it, it's an honour every time you pull on the shirt. For me, like I've worked so hard to get these opportunities to play in the football league. Um, I made my football league debut a week before I was 30. Um, like I said, I've not played in League One before. I'm 31 now, playing, going to play in League One. So, yeah, the, the journey that I've been on in, in non-league to get to here is is just mad. So, yeah, long may it continue. I think saying to my missus, I said, I've got another promotion in me yet. Um, I want yeah. to take the club up again. Um, and I think we've got the foundations in place to do so. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be a... A big summer rebuilding because we're going to lose players. I know they've obviously done the release list, but um, yeah, there'll be players that will stay. There'll be players that will go, um, mm -hmm. and there'll be other players that come in. And it's, I think we saw with this year, it was such a massive turnaround in the summer um, that it it just took time to bed in. Like we were still trying to do, trying to play the same way that we were towards the end of the season, but relationships weren't built we had different formations different personnel lots of injuries and so yeah it's it's going to be a, a big summer of rebuilding we've got to bring the right players in um and yeah it's 
let's go and have it. Let's ready for the challenge. Yeah. I, I think for, and for me now, it's it's sort of looking forward to that first game of the season. I think fixtures will come out soon. Um, and yeah, for us, it's it's a chance to showcase ourselves at that level and and go and do some damage at this level. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It should be should be amazing to to be back in League One. Um, and obviously, a lot of questions have been have been coming in. Um, a lot of people have asked this: what What's like your favourite team stadium? You're you're looking forward to League One because there is quite a few. Obviously, you got Wednesday, Ipswich, um, and you know Barnsley, Portsmouth. Um, yeah, what what club and ground are you most looking forward to going next season as a player? Oh, the Mem, obviously. <laughs> get, them, <laughs> get, the, get the Mem. But no, it's uh, in terms of away grounds, I think for me, I'm from Nottingham. So Derby away is going to be one that I'm looking yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of my good mates are Forest fans. They're Forest season ticket holders. So <laughs> they've, they've all saying, oh, they're going to be in the in the Rovers end for the um, for the Derby game. But, but no, like I said, there's a lot of big clubs in this league, but we're a big club as well. Like we, we, we'll, we'll go and mix it with them all. Um, like I said we we're not going to be scared of anyone. We're going back ourselves against them, and and yeah, it'll be a be a good test. But like I said for, we beat we played Oxford, didn't we? Did well against Oxford both times, sort of more than held our own. So we've got experience of playing sort of teams at that level, and and yeah, if we can keep the brand of football that we had last year, particularly towards the end, the way we moved the ball, I think that's probably more suited to to a League One sort of level. So. So yeah, I think if you have if you had to pick one, I think Derby away is the one that I'm probably most excited for. Yeah, Derby. Yeah, that, that should be class. Like I can I completely forgot, you know, there's just so many, yeah, new teams. Um and yeah, Derby should be class. First what first time for me going there. And of course, um, you know, a lot of uh obviously Rovers did play there, I think was it two thousands, early two thousands, but yeah, a lot of us, you know, younger fans, um, yeah absolutely buzzing for Derby. That should be a class one. Um, what else have we got? Uh, what was the what was the actual uh, perception? I know you obviously got told by Warner. Um, what was that actual perception of Rovers before you actually joined? Like, yeah, what did you what did you think about, you know, joining and having like a, a new challenge? Well, I didn't I didn't really have time to think about it because I got the phone call from my agent and it was in the afternoon and then I was driving down to Bristol in the hotel that night and I was in training the next day. So you don't really have time to so quickly go on and you look at, and to be honest, I forgot that uh, Joey was even the gaffer. So I've looked on. So first thing you do, look at the staff, check up to all the staff and you see, oh yeah, Joe Barton's there and have a quick look at the players or whatever. And you obviously aware that they got relegated last year, but didn't really have any kind of, opinion one way or the other um realized how far down bristol is from nottingham <laughs> i think i sort of said to my missus i rang my missus and was like oh i'm on the way down to bristol she's like miles away i was like well yeah I said I've got an opportunity here i've got a and she's been class with it all like dead supportive and everything but yeah i didn't really have, like, have a perception of them i'd i'd seen them play watching Notts county as a kid um but then you start to see like the crowds at the preseason friendlies. You see your messages on Twitter. You see the kind of momentum that the that the fans can build with the club. And yeah. but I think the fans' perception of me is like, okay, he's he's going to be an all right keeper. He's but he'd be a good number two. I think that was what a lot of the messages were. And and I was I was just ready to embrace the challenge. And if I was going to be a number two, it was about supporting the lads. I think if you watch. Sorry, before the um, before any game, when we have pre-match meals, they play all the um, like all the goals that we scored this season. So it starts with Keane's at Mansfield and kind of goes all the way through, just as like a positive reinforcement thing. And if you watch that, Keane runs to the bench, and there's me and Connor Taylor on the bench, like jumping on him, and like everyone's sort of buzzing. So just to buy, it, just bought into it from from the start, and then it's like, okay, you're going to get a chance at some point, and then it's up to me to take it. So, but no. It, I've got nothing but positive words to say about the club. I think everyone knows how much I love the club. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, and obviously there's another thing, obviously I wanted to touch on about promotion and that. How did it, how did it feel? Obviously, like you said, you, uh, and there was that, there was that photo, I think it was on Twitter, of like you, your dad, your brother and your mom. How, how did, how did that feel for you? That moment at the end, just experiencing with that. And yeah, just obviously 
end an amazing season, you know, with your with your family being there as well. And obviously, uh, you know, your uh, your missus, you know, obviously been supporting you as well, like you said, really well. Yeah, how did it how did it feel? Well, my my missus, she was on a Hindu. She was in Marbella, so she actually oh, she was in Marbella. Yeah, she is the um she said it's the only Hindu in the world where you had 14 girls all around the phone just waiting for the football scores to come in. Uh, <laughs> so she so she wasn't there, but then my mum and dad, uh, my missus' mum and dad were there as well. But my dad and my brother got to me on the pitch and then saw my mum round by the tunnel, so went into the crowd, speak to them and that, and then got them through because obviously the the security guard had done that like little cord and thing. So, and then after that, I think as the fans had sort of cleared, we went upstairs into the um, the boxes on that side, and yeah. there were a lot of the staff, a lot of the players, families, and stuff, and just had a few drinks up there and a good chat and then yeah went out from there so but no to to celebrate with with your family who've supported me for well since day one and and yeah for them to be able to to share the the sort of experiences because the last promotion at, um, at Wembley was behind closed doors so played so they weren't there for that but for this one yeah to have them there was yeah fantastic yeah yeah absolutely um Next question: What would what goalkeeper uh, did you look up to when you was younger? Was there any any certain keepers or keeper that you looked up to? The f- first keeper I remember watching, no one will probably remember him, was uh, Darren Ward. He was a keeper at Notts County. I think he went to Sheffield United Forest after that. I think he was at Derby as well. Did like a Midlands tour, but he um, he was a Notts County keeper when I was growing up. So he was like the first hero you have in football. But then just watched Peter Schmeichel when I was growing up. Um, he was kind of the the big dog when I started to to sort of come through in like the well start playing football sort of mid to late nineties. Um, so Schmeichel was probably the big one. Yeah, I'm back. Can you hear me? Yep, still here, mate. Still here. No yeah. drama. Yeah, great. Yeah, my connection is a shambles. I, I apologise to everyone watching. MBT. They're all right. Don't worry about them. They're fine. Yeah. Is that there? But yeah, you know, yeah, Peter Smyker, I, I can imagine, yeah, what a, what a keeper he was. Um, and yeah, next next question, obviously, what was what, what was what's your thoughts on on Barton as a gaffer? How how I lost it then. I think I think I think I got, I think I got the question. Um, but yeah, uh, the gaff has been with me, been absolutely fantastic. Um, he's like I said, he, he he brought me into the club. He gave me a chance. He stuck by me all season. Um, he put me back in. Obviously, after the two games I missed with the the knee injury. Um, but no, he was. Um, I got nothing but but praise for him. He's very intelligent man uh a lot more into uh like football in intelligence he's he's second to none he's very tactically astute and he is exactly how you think he is he's he's very passionate um i know charlie's gone off here but i'm still talking if anyone can hear me um but yeah very passionate and he's yeah been absolutely great with me so yeah now i'm just looking at a screen by myself so I'm waiting for charlie to come back Where are we? Can someone just message and see if tell me if I'm still on by the way? Because I'll keep talking if we are. Can't see whether Charlie's back on or whether I'm just here by myself. Nope.
comments where are we i'm on we can hear and see you fine belly right i'll crack on then someone asked me a question someone asked me a question on here i've got the comments box up now um cheers jacks ford belshaw what a legend mind don't mind that at all go on someone asked me a question i'm not singing i'm not singing ryan hodge sorry mate yes i can see him now uh is evan staying mm, not not for me to answer that one i'm afraid um as is right i'm back <laughs> i'm back i i apologize Who else is on here? Is Colin still on the piss? Um, probably. I've not spoken to him since Dubai, so he's probably still on it, yeah. How do you stay focused when the game's quiet? Um, if everyone's seen me doing my um, aerobics, trying to keep myself loose, trying to keep myself warm, trying to stay focused. Um, best save of the season? Uh, there was one at Carlisle, the Carlisle away game. The lads hit one from point blank. I saved it with my foot. Um, that's probably up there. Um, there's one at Orient as well from a header that I remember Crawley. There was a header as well. Um, what will I do when I hang up the gloves? I'll stay coaching. Um, I'll stay coaching. Love the tackle on the snake. That was good. Yeah, I enjoyed that one. Um, what else are we? Am I a cider drinker now? I had a few ciders in the changing rooms after the game, but now nah, more a beer kind of guy. Um, what do Knox County need to do next season to go up? <sighs> Two late goals last night. I was gutted. I was there. Um, yeah, not uh, not very happy. Knox County fan this morning, but yeah, I'd love to see Knox County back in the football league. Sweep keeper. How did that come about? Um, I've always been comfortable with the ball at my feet. Um, some would say I get bored and kind of want to just go and get involved, but I don't. Um, but yeah, I feel quite comfortable with the ball at my feet. So yeah, I've been... Um... Oh, Charlie, you're back now. Well, I'm back. Well, I, I just want to apologise. I was hosting a, um, hosting a q and a in the comments and been answering the questions, so I've been keeping them warm while you're away. Don't worry. That's um, no, I... I just, I yeah, I just want to say, uh, sorry for the connection. Um, it's really annoying, really annoying me. But yeah, at least, yeah, at least, yeah, people obviously are still going. You, you're answering a few questions, but yeah, I apologize for the shambles of my internet. Um, yeah, right. Where, where was we? Um, next question is, what do you think your, what do you think your best performance was this season, uh, for you personally? Um. I think in terms of this, in terms of like complete performances, there's probably two. One would be probably Forest Green at home. Um, was quite busy in that one towards the end of the season. Was we were under the cosh a bit and made a few saves there, and it turned out to be obviously a, a big point for us that one. Um, and then I think one of my earlier games we played Crawley at home, and I think that was probably like my fourth or fifth game. And I think that's probably the first game when I think the gas heads sort of saw me in 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 full flow, really. So that was um that was probably that's the one that sticks out from early on in the season. And then I think, yeah, the forest the forest green one and would be, yeah, probably up there with that. I'd say they're my two best. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah, that yeah, that quality, yeah, that was the one where um where Leon Clark won it come off come off the bench and score. But yeah, I remember, yeah, quality season. Yeah, like you said, that forest green game. Uh, yeah, nil nil. Obviously, last but one uh, home game of the season. And yeah, you was class. But yeah, I, I see everyone um, in the comments saying about the internet. I I know it's blame BT. We're changing it, but it's a absolute. Yeah, I've got so many words. Um, but yeah, appreciate everyone tuning in though. Do smash the like button as well if you are enjoying it as well, and do subscribe to the channel if you're new as well. Um. Next question, what advice would you give to a young keeper? I mean, to be fair, this question I would have asked you about 14 years ago because I used to be a I used to be a keeper as well. But yeah, that's a good question. What yeah, what advice would you give? I think to be a to be a goalkeeper, it's a very mentally challenging position. Um you you're isolated from 
the rest of the group. You, you wear a different kit, you train in a different place, you have a different mm -hmm. skill set. Um, so it, it is a very specialized position, but if you can, if you get the bug for it and you get the love for it, then there's, there's nothing better. Like for me, I imagine making saves is probably the same as scoring a goal, like that kind of feeling that you get. Um, so a, advice would be to, to, st to stick with it because there's going to be a lot of knockbacks as a keeper, especially as a young keeper conceding goals. It, <laughs> it is hard and it doesn't get any easier as you get to 31. Um, still feels the same every time you can see the goal but yeah to stick with it and it mentally like I said it's a very sort of challenging position um but yes one that I advocate we need the next generation of goalkeepers coming through so yeah massively stick with it yeah completely agree another question what was what's your favorite Rovers chant is it is it is it the one about you or have you got a, another one um I think the one about me, I'm challenging the Rovers fans to get a bit more creative next year <laughs> instead of just shouting Belsha. No, I, I love it. I love the Belsha one, to be honest. But my challenge to the Rovers fans next year is to come up with a with a new one for me. But um, no, there's... Um, I like the, the new one they've been singing with Taylor at the back, Collins and Attack, that one. I enjoy that one. Um, oh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah. been around a bit. Um, but I think, you know, when, when you walk out and you hear like the goodnight Irene, especially towards the end of the season, like when the, you can't get a ticket for them um, and the fans are belting that out, um, the little uh, repertoire that they do with that, I think, yeah, it's got to be Irene. That's my favourite one. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. It just gets, yeah, it's just such a good song. It just gets going, the atmosphere, how loud it is. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, who's, your, who's your best mate uh, at Rovers? Oh, mm, there's a couple <laughs> This is going to lead into an, another question, but I'd probably say Evo. I'm really, I am, I'm close with Evo. We live to me, Evo, and Wheelo live together down there. Um, but then I probably spend the most time with Jed. Um, obviously, being keepers, we train together and close with Jed. And my other roommate's Alfie, so close mm -hmm. with them. But yeah, it's a change room where every, it, there's no like bad eggs in the change room. Everyone gets on. Um, but yeah, they're they're a good bunch of lads. Yeah, yeah, completely agree. I mean, yeah, that was obviously going to be sort of the next question is like, what is the what is the morale and yeah, just the team ethic and everything been like this season? I mean, even 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 I'm guessing even when we were not on the best of form and people were still gelling, etc. I'm guessing even then it was it was still fairly good because even when you look at it, it, it looks like everyone gets along you know the morale the everything about it has been really good this season yeah it, it 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 was tough at the start of the season because as a footballer you're paid to get results you're paid to win football matches and we weren't doing enough of that at the start of the season and you can feel like you feel the anxiousness from the crowd you you feel the the sort of disappointment and and it, it is hard to stay upbeat but we did exactly that we turn up for training every week training would be the same smiles on faces lads that have been gra grafting all week um and then it the gaffer would always say to us look we've got the players we've got the ability in here it just needs to click and it will click at some point and fortunately for us it just clicked in time <laughs> gave us enough of a chance to to kick on in the second half of the season but if it if it had clicked any earlier i think we'd have been playing sailing in the autos but but yeah it just um clicked at the right time for us and and yeah helped us go on that run and then that team spirit that camaraderie I mean ev every dressing room will say oh ours is the best dressing room ours is the best dressing room but we we've got a great bunch of lads who all would run through a brick wall for each other and if you've got that then and then you've got players like Elliot Anderson it's just unfair that we had him um you, you've got players like that that go and win your games and and yeah you've got a right chance yeah yeah completely agree and the Next one as well. What's your what's your thoughts on how how good and how good uh, uh, Tony Warner has been for you this season? Yeah, Tony's been great. Um, he's as a goalkeeper coach, you don't you don't just need someone to train with you every day. You need someone who understands you as a person, so can put an arm around you when you need that, can give you a kick up the arse when you need a kick up the arse. Like you've you need that sort of father figure, so to speak. And, and to Tony was fantastic with me. Um, the conversations I've had with him throughout the season and the support he's given me and 
it, yeah, he, he, he was, he's been absolutely, absolutely fantastic with me. What a guy. Yeah. Um, who would you, who would you say the, the best keeper in the world is right now? Obviously, obviously apart from yourself, who would you say the best keeper in the world is right now? Um, uh, you'd have to go for one of the Brazilians in the Prem. I think for me, I'd, I'd always favor Edison over Alisson just because that left foot is just incredible. And, the way the way that he plays um the game is is the well it's the way that i like to play the game i like to obviously come out and get on the ball and give rovers fans a heart attack every now and then but <laughs> but that, that, that that's the way i like to play and he he's the best in the world at it um so yeah. for me they they're the kind of keepers that you look at and sort of edison and Allison are kind of the two you sort of try and i try and model my game on like i said that i'm comfortable with a ball at my feet similar to them but they just obviously do it a lot better than me yeah 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 that's fair um have you got any pre-match sort of uh rituals um not really i'd i'd kind of develop one i'd go and have a little swing on the crossbar just to kind of loosen myself up and then have a little bit of a warm-up kind of routine bit of a moment to myself before the game but but no i'd i'm not i'm not superstitious like i wouldn't eat the same breakfast if we'd won or wear yeah, the same yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't have anything like that. So I'm not superstitious in that sense. But my pre-match routine from like, because I come out at like two minutes to two. So like just before two o'clock. So from then to sort of kick off is kind of very regimented in what I do. So I like I like to be kind of, have plenty of time. I like to have a chilled warm up. I like to laugh and have a joke and relax. And that's what gets the best out of me. So yeah, as long as I'm consistent with that, then I'm fine. Yeah, pretty agree. Uh, next question: What what is your what's your what's your favorite uh, meal to have as a as a player? Either getting like just before the game or before the game and after the game. What do you usually have? Is there a certain meal you have? Uh, before the game, we go to the training ground. We'll have pre match, so I just have your standard pasta, sauce, chicken, bits and bobs like that. These lads will have all different pre matches and stuff, but that's my kind of standard pre match. I don't like to be too full. Um, but then afterwards, if if we've won on a Saturday and I'm coming back here and I love a, a curry takeaway, so you get a nice hot spice curry, a bit of naan bread, nice cobra, <laughs> King Fisher or something, and that'll do me on a Saturday night, no problem. So, so yeah, that's my kind of like go to on a Saturday night. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, what would what would be your uh, favorite goal you've seen a score this season? Um. Yeah, I mean, in terms of input, you have to say Elliot's header in, in terms of just what it meant. Um, but in terms of, I think the most relieved I felt when a goal went in was Evo's at Barrow, the one that won goal of the season. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. We were just peppering and peppering and peppering and just couldn't score, couldn't score. So when he's hit that, um, that was probably the most I've enjoyed a goal. And then, I mean, we've got, we've got some unbelievable goals when you... I think all the strikes like Azza, Sam Finley's had a few, Evo's scored a few, Elliot's. I mean, some some of the some of the goals we've scored have been been fantastic. So um, but yeah, in terms of what it meant, Elliot's head is definitely the main one. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I just want to say, uh, I know the I know the connection's been terrible, right? Um so like basically I'm gonna I'm gonna end end the stream uh and then and then maybe maybe do one again in sort of a uh, it's really doing 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 my head in. Um uh, and then hopefully by then it's it's a bit better. Uh but yeah, I just wanna say, yeah, obviously gutted that we're ending it early, but I wanna say thank you to everyone that's uh tuned in. All I can say is I, I I apologize. Um, the 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 some bloke from the BT come last week and it meant to be fixed, but now it's it is it is a joke, especially when when you're trying to do a stream. And I can imagine how annoying it is for people to watch and just either me disappear or it, it's just really annoying. But I, I want to say a, a huge thanks to you for coming on, of course, as well. Um, and yeah, I hope everyone has enjoyed it, even though I've been probably muttering and it's all gone everywhere and you know, frozen, etc. But 
yeah, ho hopefully we can we can do another one um, soon if 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 you want if if my connection when my connection is better anyway. Um, but yeah, really really do appreciate you you coming on. Um, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, problem. everyone, it, do smash the like button if you haven't already. It do is subscribe. It's fine. Every, everyone will understand. Like it, it is fine. I kept them entertained while you're away. Anyway, I was going through all my questions. So um, yeah, like saying here, they've got what is it, seventeen hundred on here? So. Fair yeah, place. 17 hundred watching, yeah, which is crazy. So, yeah, yeah, really, really appreciate everyone uh, tuning in. Uh, and, yeah, you know, just subscribe if you're new. I'll try and get, um, of course, a, a few other players on as well. But I will, um, if Belly's up for it again, we will do another one. When my connection's better, it's just so annoying when you're doing it and, you know, you want to, you want to, you know, keep, you know, everyone happy because I, I've, I've been on watch streams before when it's bad but yeah anyway just uh, uh yeah just a huge thanks to you to coming on anyway really really do appreciate taking your time out and yeah coming on as well billy no worries mate no worries anytime yeah it's been a pleasure hope everyone's enjoyed it and yeah we'll see you all in um well in pre-season absolutely cheers everyone up the gas